Influence Church exists to help you know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and influence your world. Good morning, everyone. Awesome, awesome. Everybody looks to be awake. After such a great worship, of course, of course, everybody is awake. So, as Kelly mentioned, today we are going to end uh, our Healthy Like Jesus series. And we discovered that Jesus was the most emotionally healthy person to ever live. And this series is based on the book Emotionally Healthy Christianity by Chris uh, Thurman, which actually I really recommend you read it. So if you didn't buy it yet, it's a a good book to read. Uh, Before we are going to talk about an area that we all could use some growth, let's look at the previous nine uh, characteristics, nine traits that actually Jesus had or Jesus developed in his life that actually we talked for the last couple months. First one that we uh, start with was seek to serve. Jesus has developed and he came on this earth with a desire to serve each one of us, not just serve the community or people in that time. He came on earth, he left heaven, he left all the benefits that he had in heaven to come here on earth to serve each one of us. He left heaven also to show us how beneficial it is to serve others. The second trait we discover from Jesus that he had this gift of viewing reality accurately. And we talk about how we learn and how we discovered that actually Jesus had a 2020 vision when um, uh, he looked at the reality around him. And to be honest, we as humans have the tendency to maybe magnify or minimize or sometimes even personalize everything and anything that happened in this world. And we learned that to be able to see the reality accurately, we have to look to it through Jesus' lenses. The third, we talk about taking appropriate responsibility. We learn that I am responsible 100% for how I think, how I feel, and how I act. And all the other people are 100% responsible for how they feel, for uh, how they act, and of course for how they think. Uh, Fourth, we learn from Jesus how he delayed gratification properly. Uh, We saw that he delayed that to be able to fulfill his mission on earth. And we learn that if we discipline ourselves and learn to delay, delay gratification in the short time, we will enjoy greater rewards in the long run. The fifth uh, trait we look at and was listen wholeheartedly. We learn, if you didn't discover that yet, that God gave us two ears (laughs) but one mouth. And that's for a good reason. We learn that we need to listen with the intent of understanding the other person and not with an intent to just reply. I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'm so driven by solution that I listen and I'm like, my mind is already developing the solution instead of trying to understand the person. So, um, Apostle James said that, be quick to listen and slow to speak. The sixth uh, trait we uh, learned was about forgive and seek forgiveness. Those, go, those two go hand in hand. And we learned that actually the forgiven people know how to forgive. When we realize how much we were forgiven, we should have no problem forgiving others. We saw also that unforgiveness is a bait from the enemy, from Satan. And forgiving and asking for forgiveness It's actually for our own benefit. We will have a better life. We will have better relation. We will be healthier if we will just learn to forgive others and ask for forgiveness from others. 
Uh, the other one we talked about was facing problems head on. And the best way out, it's always going through. We, we become our own worst enemies when we run from our problems. And we discover that from the story of Jonah uh, in the Bible. The, two weeks ago, we talked about anchor worth in God. And we realized that our worth should not be dictated by others. Not by sometimes our parents, not by our siblings, not by neighbors, not by your pastor, not by anyone around you. Actually, our worth should be defined by God. Our worth is established by God. And by the way, he died for us. Well, that should say something about our worth. Uh, last week, we talked about handle anger well, and I share a few stories about uh, uh, in my life that should not go public. Oh, sorry about that. I think went online the message. <laughs> we realize that anger is not a sin, but how we manifest that anger could become a sin. We learn that the challenge of walking in Jesus' footsteps when it comes to managing our anger is to be angry about the right things in the right way and at the right time. How many of you walk in a discussion with your spouse and it's just the wrong time to say something? Right? You know what I'm talking about. Happened to me two weeks ago. So, today we are going to close our series, Healthy Like Jesus, with an area that we all could use some growth. Of all the people Jesus encountered on planet Earth, he seems the most upset with the Pharisees. The things that seemed to bother Jesus about them was how blind they were to their own defects. In fact, if you read Matthew chapter 23, uh, you will find Jesus really upset with them and their so-called holiness. Jesus called them multiple times hypocrites. So today's message is called Grow in Self-Awareness. Let me make it clear. I am not calling us hypocrites. Not yet. But... <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but I would like each one of us to be intentional in realizing that we are not perfect. Period. A key mark of an emotional, emotionally healthy follower of Christ is a high de degree of self-awareness concerning the good, the bad, and the ugly inside of each one of us and the willingness to take the plank out of our own eyes when it comes to owning our own stuff. And if I'm looking at you during my message, don't take it personal. I just like to scout. <laughs> <laughs> Part of doing ministry and also being married for almost 20 years, Kelly and I try to help couples navigate and understand what it means to be married or to have a good marriage. Don't get me wrong, we are still learning. We are not perfect. In fact, Kelly can tell you about my failure uh, to understand her emotion last week when she was trying to just express her emotion to me. Sometimes we see couples arguing in our uh, meetings about anything and everything in their marriages about finances, they argue about how to raise the kids, they are uh, arguing about how to worship, they are arguing about how often to go to church, they are arguing about how early to be the, at church, they are arguing about which way to go to church. It's like unbelievable. Sometimes people keep arguing uh, in our presence about how to load the dishwasher, how to hang the toilet paper, how to clean the bathroom, uh, fold laundry, how to park or not to park in the garage. Looks like they are fighting and arguing about everything and anything. The only thing they seem to agree on is that is the other person for their marriage or how their marriage is. A lack of self-awareness is creating all this tension and fighting that without realizing 
is transferring to kids, to spouses, to neighbors, to friends, to coworkers, and it's affecting the relation that we have with everyone out there. Kelly and I realized that if we want to have a successful marriage, we have to swallow our pride and recognize that we both have a lot of flaws that we have to work on. When we decided to take the plank out of our own eyes, actually we began to improve our marriage. We began to be intentional, discovering more and be more self-aware about us instead of just be more aware about our spouse. So today it's about growing in our self-awareness. A lack of self-awareness in the relationship is toxic and damages both people involved. Growing in self-awareness is going to help us be more willing to hear corrective feedback. If we are humbling ourselves and listening to what others say, even when some of it is off base, helps pave the way for the relationship to become safer and more loving over time. And by the way, I am not saying that everything that everyone say is true. What I'm saying, it's okay to listen to it and then assess and figure out if any truth is in that, what they are saying. But so many times we don't even listen to what people has to say because our defense mechanism is going up. Our walls are going up and our ears are shut off. We have to be intentional in allowing other people to speak in our lives. Of course, then, we have to decide if it is any truth in it. Carl Jung said, everything that irritates us about others can lead to an understanding of ourselves. The next time you are irritated with someone, ask yourself what it is in you that closely, closely resembles the thing you find irritating. Courageously work on that flaw and you'll develop into more self-aware human being. And your relationship with others will be safer and better. This series is about being healthy like Jesus. But let's be honest. Every time we compare ourselves to Jesus, we'll come out with the short end of the stack. And because Jesus was a perfectly self-aware person, and that is always painful, but something healthy that actually Christians are willing to do. We look at Jesus at our example, how we want to become. While Jesus had perfect self-awareness, he shared a story about someone who seems to have little, if any, self-awareness at all. So I want to just zero in in this story, and I'm going to read a few Bible verses to just see how this man whose arrogance and unself-aware words will echo actually through the ages. So, this parable is found in the uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, uh, starting with verse 9. Then, Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other one as, was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I'm not like other people, cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give you a tenth of my income. But... The tax collector stood at a distance and dare not even lift his eyes to heaven. He didn't even dare to go close to the temple. So he lift his eye, he didn't he not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, Jesus said. The sinner 
not the Pharisee return home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Sometimes I like to paraphrase in my own translation, and this last uh, uh, sentence, I like to say it, the one that think they are right, they will be found wrong. And the one that they were thinking that are wrong, they might be found right. See, when we walk in, world, in this world like that, thinking like, you know what? I'm, I think I might be wrong. Then we allow ourselves to be able to listen to the other person. I'm not saying that we are wrong, but it's good to listen to the other people. Jesus aimed this parable directly at self-righteousness of the Pharisees that they were thinking they are right all the time. The Pharisee in this story arrogantly saw himself as not like other people. And in truth, he wasn't like robbers, he wasn't like evildoers, he wasn't like the adulterer, or even like the tax collector, in my opinion, and he was even worse. Why? Because even the tax collector was self-aware enough to know he was a sinner in need of a savior. He needed the mercy of God. When I think about self-awareness, I'm thinking about the Bible verse from 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, where uh, Apostle John is saying this. If we, claim we, if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. In my opinion, we are all in danger of, become, in danger of becoming a Pharisee. And actually, the ones that are in the most danger to become a Pharisee, unfortunately, are the ones that grew up in church. Because we start thinking just like the Pharisee. Well, I didn't speak like them, I didn't swear, I didn't lie, I didn't cheat, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. And without realizing, we develop this kind of self-righteousness. Which actually, it's in our detriment. Because we'll realize that, Actually, we might not need a savior like other people need a savior. But bottom line is this. We all are called sinners. And the last time I checked, and I read the Bible quite a few times, is not saying the little sinner and the big sinner. I never found that in the Bible. God is just calling everyone sinners, saved by grace, saved by Jesus Christ. So, in my opinion, we are all in danger of becoming little like this Pharisee. We need to stop kidding ourselves. We all have numerous blind spots when it comes to the truth about how we really are, especially the dark side of who we are. We see ourselves through a very cloudy, foggy, even dirty mirror. And so many times we see ourselves just kind of in a puzzle pieces. Apostle Paul is saying, saying it like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflection in a mirror. But then when we will see everything with perfect clarity. But then, and the Bible verse in context there is when we will see Jesus. But bottom line is this. Closer we find ourselves to Jesus, more clearly we'll be able to see. And it's because he is going to be the one that helps us to see things clearly. And have that self-awareness and develop that self-awareness in us. If we want to be an emotionally healthy Christian, we must allow God to hold up whatever mirrors he wants when it comes to our flaws and defects. Strangely enough, sometimes we are, also, we are also blind to our good qualities and our gracious and kind God wants to show us those as well. Many people have good talents and gifts in their life and are not aware of it. And they need other people in their life to show it or to tell them about the gifts that they have. Let me ask you something. Do you struggle 
getting defensive when people try to give you feedback about your dark side, or maybe you have trouble accepting a compliment, just think about it. And let's be intentional in growing in our self-awareness. Self-awareness can be broken down in two categories. First, it's public awareness, which has to do with being aware of how others view us. How others view our values, our aspirations, our passions, our thoughts, our feelings, our actions, strengths and weaknesses. That is about public awareness. But also, we have the second part, which is the private awareness, which has to do with how we view ourselves, how we view our values, our aspiration, our passions, our thoughts, feelings, actions, strengths, and weaknesses. To improve our self-awareness, we need to ask others to give us feedback about how they see us. The feedback we need from safe and trustworthy friends concern both our strengths and our weaknesses, our pluses and minuses, the things that we are doing well and the things that we are not doing so well. We need to listen to what they have to say and not react in a defensive or argumentative way. I have a quick question for you that I would like you to ponder and think about it for the next couple days. Do you have any friends that can speak in your life without feeling that you get mad or you don't want to speak to them anymore for the rest of their lives? Do you have trustworthy, trustworthy friends that you can go to them and you say like, can you be honest with me and tell me what do you think about this or what do you think about that or how do I do this or how do I do that? Do we have that self-awareness to be able to accept criticism but also to accept encouragement? And to be honest with you, it's not easy because we live in a culture that nobody should tell me what I want to do or how should I do it. We live in a culture and a world where nobody's wrong, everybody's right. Well, cannot everybody be right? Because then someone is going to be wrong. Our past shaped who we are today. But today can shape who we will become tomorrow. And it is good to look at our past to understand who we are and why we do what we do. Have a self-awareness about us, about our past, our history, and how that affected and uh, influenced who we are today. And also allow that past to, for us to learn from how that influenced how we see God in our lives. Second Corinthian Apostle Paul says this. Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself. I know nobody likes tests. I was talking uh, the other day with uh, my niece, and like, oh man, we have so many finals, we have so many quizzes, we have so many tests. And I remember my mind went all the way back to high school, and it's like, yeah, I skip those most of the time. <laughs> because in the communist uh, world, uh, everyone passed, because they don't want to have kids failing. So it doesn't matter if you pass a test or not. Didn't help too much with my self-esteem, but back to the uh, message. When we lack, when we lack self-awareness, we misunderstand ourselves, and that leads to, mis lead to misunderstanding God as well. Our pride blinds us with inaccurate ideas about um, that we are in a relationship with God. A lack of self-awareness can also hinder our awareness of the hearts and lives of others around us. We can affect so many people around us just by lacking a self-awareness. How many of you have been with family at around Thanksgiving or Christmas or dinners with family and people start opening their mouth and they start talking and you'll be like, oh man, he better shut up. He better shut up. He better be quiet. 
you can see so clearly a lack of self-awareness around them. Sometimes you can see even where he's going and it's like, oh man, oh no, don't, don't go there, don't say that, don't. And then you start to interrupt or start to know, hey, anybody wants more cookies? <laughs> but their soul has embedded with lack of self-awareness that they keep going no matter what. The more self-aware we are, the better we are able to regulate our emotions. When we understand our own strengths and weaknesses, we can adapt our behavior accordingly. Self-knowledge and acknowledging our sins can bring us closer to Jesus and the Holy Spirit in our lives. It can also give us a better understanding of why we are here on planet Earth. Self-awareness gives us the potential to become closer to God and become the best version of ourselves as God intended. The goal of self-awareness should be greater self-acceptance and less harsh self-judgment. It's just coming to a place where you understand who we are, why we are, how we are, but also not just comply, uh, just not be, become complacent and stay there, but be intentional in becoming better. As I said, the past influence and shape us in who we are today. But what we are going today is going to empower us and help us to become a better tomorrow. And by the way, God the Bible, and friends around us can help develop that self-awareness uh, in us. The purpose of becoming more self-aware is to bring more conviction in our lives to seek to become better. John said this, chapter 16, verse 8. And when he comes, actually here, uh, uh, Jesus was talking about he has to go to heaven after the resurrection. Because without him going to heaven, Holy Spirit will not come. So he has to go to heaven for the Holy Spirit to come here. And then Jesus said, and when he comes, the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness. So the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts. Holy Spirit wants to bring conviction, not condemnation. Are two big words, but complete opposite, complete separate. Conviction is about awareness. And the beauty of awareness is that it is the first step towards growth and change. Meanwhile, condemnation has guilt and punishment attached to it. There is no wriggle room, no space to grow and change. There is only the consequences of action. Holy Spirit wants to bring conviction because he's showing us it's a better way. He wants to empower us, to help us. Apostle Paul said this in Romans. So now... There is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has fed you from the power of sin that leads to death. I would like to close this message about self-awareness by helping you to understand four very unique things about yourself. First... You are special because you are created in God's image. Have no doubts, God's image is perfect. God is perfect. And we are created in His image. The second, we are separated and alienated from God because of sin. So is this separation between us and God. But the third, have no doubt that God calls you to himself and offers you forgiveness and reconciliation through Jesus Christ. He came on planet earth to serve and he came on planet earth to die on the cross for us to be reconciled with the Father for us to be able to enter His grace, for us to be able to spend the eternity with Him. And the fourth, 
the last but not the least, God sent you into the world to be his agent, to influence this world, to expand his kingdom. Let's be intentional in developing this and grow in this self-awareness that we'll be able to see what we are not doing too good, but also to know that we can improve, that we can become better, that we can start fulfilling God's vision and God's plan for each one of us. To become healthier like Jesus, we need to allow His Holy Spirit to work in us, to change us, to empower us to do His work. If we'll try to do it on our own, if we'll rely just on this world wisdom, we will fail. Because this world wisdom, it's limited. God's wisdom, it's unlimited. So I want to close with this verse from Philippians chapter 2. And if I can have everyone, please stand up. Because I would like to just uh, end with this verse and also pray. Apostle Paul is writing to a church of Philippi. And he's saying this. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Think about this verse as you go through today and tomorrow and maybe through the next year. Write it somewhere. Put it on your refrigerator. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you can empower each one of us to become healthier like Jesus. We know that we won't be able to become more like Him without the Holy Spirit in each one of us. So right here, right now, everybody with your eyes closed, I would like you to just raise your hands and just say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus and the example that He is for us. I'm asking for you, Holy Spirit, to empower me, to strengthen me, to discover what is wrong in me, but also what is good in me, and help me to fulfill your vision and your plan for me, my life, and my family. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. And everybody says, Amen.